everyone, today we will be making this delicious crab cake scampi. This pasta was so freaking delicious. It complements the crab cake so well. I can't wait to show you guys, so let's get started with the video. In a pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add 1 4th cup of diced onions and 1 4th cup of diced bell peppers. Season your bell peppers and onions with salt and pepper and then saute them for about 5 minutes. When you're finished, set them to the side. Next, in a bowl, add 1 4th cup of mayonnaise. 1 teaspoon of Dijon mustard, 1 teaspoon of lemon juice, 2 teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, 1 and a half teaspoons of Old Bay hot sauce, a half a teaspoon of pepper, 1 fourth teaspoon of onion powder, 1 fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 fourth teaspoon of Creole seasoning, 1 tablespoon of parsley, and one beaten egg. Mix all these ingredients together until well combined. Next add about one pound of crab meat, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, your bell peppers and onions from before, and one fourth cup of green onions. Fold all these ingredients together until well combined. When you're finished, take a handful of your crab mixture and shape it into half a sphere. When you finish shaping your crab cakes, place them on a baking sheet and then put them in the oven to bake at 450 degrees for 15 minutes. While our crab cakes are cooking in the oven, we are going to start making our scampi. In a pan over medium heat, melt two tablespoons of butter. Then add a half a cup of panko breadcrumbs. Cook your breadcrumbs for four to six minutes or until golden brown. Once you have toasted your breadcrumbs, set them to the side. Next, in a large pot, add salt. Bring the water to a boil and add your pasta noodles. Cook your pasta noodles for however long it says to on the box. Next, in a large pan, add olive oil. Then add 1 4th cup of diced onions. Saute your onions for about 5 minutes. Then add 1 4th teaspoon of red pepper flakes and 1 tablespoon of minced garlic. Saute everything together for about 30 seconds to a minute. After that, add 1 cup of white wine. Continue to cook the wine for about three minutes. Then add six tablespoons of butter. Once the butter has melted, add the juice of one lemon. A bit of pasta water. One fourth teaspoon of salt. 1 4th teaspoon of pepper, 1 4th teaspoon of Old Bay, and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. Mix all these ingredients together until well combined.
Once you finish making your sauce, add your pasta noodles. Once your pasta is mixed in, add some Italian seasoning and one tablespoon of parsley. And that's it, you finish making your scampi pasta. Your crab cakes should be finished cooking, so go ahead and take them out of the oven. Once you've taken them out of the oven, brush them with some melted butter. Now you can go ahead and plate everything up. Use the breadcrumbs we toasted before and sprinkle them all over your pasta. Then add some shredded parmesan cheese and parsley to your crab cake and pasta. And this is the finished result! This was so delicious. The scampi pasta complements the crab cake perfectly in my opinion. And the toasted breadcrumbs adds a really nice crunch to it. The crab cake tasted great as well. I like adding lemon juice to my crab cake so the lemony flavor from the pasta went with the crab cake so well. I was inspired to make this after seeing Kimmy's Creation make a crab cake scampi and hers looked so good. She has a lot of good recipes. I'll have her TikTok and YouTube channel linked in the description below. This was so good and I totally recommend giving it a try. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be showing you how to make these delicious fried crab balls. These were really good and I can't wait to show you how to make them, so let's get started with the video. In a small pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add 1 4th cup of diced onions and 1 4th cup of diced bell peppers. Season your onions and bell peppers with salt and pepper and then saute them for about 5 minutes. When you're finished, set your onions and bell peppers to the side. Next, in a large bowl, add 1 4th cup of mayonnaise, 1 teaspoon of Dijon mustard, 2 teaspoons of lemon juice, 2 teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, 1 and a half teaspoons of Old Bay hot sauce, a half a teaspoon of pepper, 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of Creole seasoning, a half a teaspoon of Old Bay, 1 tablespoon of parsley, and 1 beaten egg. Mix everything together until well combined. Then add 12 ounces of lump crab meat. One third cup of breadcrumbs. Your diced bell peppers and onions from before and 1 4th cup of green onions. Fold everything together until well combined. When you're finished, Place your crab mixture to the side and take out a baking sheet. Next, take some of your crab mixture and roll it up into a ball. Make sure you roll it up nice and tight so it doesn't come apart. Repeat this process until you run out of your crab mixture. Try to make your crab balls around the same size. It might help to use an ice cream scooper or a cookie scooper.
When you're finished, cover your crab balls in plastic wrap and then place them in the fridge for 30 minutes to chill. Next, in a bowl, add some flour. Then season it with pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, and Old Bay. Then mix it together until well combined. When you're finished, set your flour mixture to the side, and then in another bowl, add two eggs. Then beat your eggs until smooth. Set your eggs to the side and in one last bowl add breadcrumbs and panko breadcrumbs. Then season your breadcrumbs with pepper and Old Bay. Then mix everything together until well combined. Set your breadcrumb mixture to the side and then take your crab balls out of the fridge. Now that we've chilled our crab balls, they should be able to keep their shape better and we can begin coating them. First, coat your crab in the flour. Then in the egg. And finally, in your breadcrumbs. Then repeat this process until you've coated all of your crab balls. When you're finished, you can begin frying them. In a pot or deep fryer, heat vegetable oil up to 350 degrees. Fry your crab balls for about 4-5 to five minutes. Make sure to flip or turn them for even color. Once you finish frying your crab balls, take them out and place them on a wire rack. Repeat this process until you've fried all of your crab balls. Now that we've finished frying, we can move on and make our sauce. In a bowl, add 2 thirds cup of mayonnaise, 1 tablespoon of Dijon mustard, 1 tablespoon of lemon juice, a half a tablespoon of hot sauce, 1 teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, so 1 eighth teaspoon of salt, 1 eighth teaspoon of pepper, some smoked paprika, and some cayenne pepper. Mix everything together until well combined. Once you've finished making your sauce, you can go ahead and plate everything up. And this is the finished result! These came out great, they were really really good. The crab bites tasted amazing and it went really well with the sauce. The recipe was pretty easy to make too. I think these would be awesome as an appetizer or like a party snack. Oh, and by the way, if you have any leftovers, you can just place them in the freezer and when you're ready to eat them, heat them up in the oven or an air fryer.
Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious crab cake egg rolls. This video is inspired by Simply Food by TY. He made a video on how to make lump crab cake egg rolls and I totally wanted to try making them. I'll put his video down in the description below. Alright, let's get started with the video. Begin by chopping up a red bell pepper, a green bell pepper, and some green onions. In a small pan over medium heat, melt some butter. Then add 1 4th cup of onions and 1 4th cup of your peppers. Lightly season with salt and pepper. Saute your vegetables until they're translucent. Then take them off the heat. Crack one large egg in a small bowl and beat until smooth. When you're finished, set your beaten egg to the side. In a medium sized bowl, add 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 half teaspoon of pepper, 1 tablespoon of dried parsley, 1 half tablespoon of Old Bay, 2 teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, 1 and 1 half teaspoon of hot sauce, 1 teaspoon of Dijon mustard, 2 tablespoons of mayonnaise, and your 1 beaten egg. Whisk everything together until well combined. When you're finished, add your lump crab meat. Then add 1 half cup of crushed Ritz crackers and your sautéed vegetables. Now gently fold everything together. Alright, then add 1 4th cup of green onions. When everything is well combined and folded together, you can set your crab mixture to the side. Now we can begin assembling our egg rolls. Wet each side of your egg roll wrapper. The reason we wet the sides is because it works as an adhesive for the egg roll. Once you fold your egg roll together, the water will make sure the egg roll will stick together and will not come apart. Then add about 2 tablespoons of the crab cake mixture into the center of the egg roll wrapper. Make sure you add it vertically. Fold the two vertical ends into the center. Then fold the horizontal end into the middle as well. Roll it once and then stop. Alright, so the rest of the wrapper should look like a triangle. Add a bit more water to it and then continue rolling your egg roll. After that, you're all finished.
Bam! You made an egg roll. Make sure not to overstuff your egg rolls. About two tablespoons should do it. I learned that from the first time I made it. This was the first time I made the egg roll, and I added way too much crab cake mixture. I mean, I could barely fold the entire thing because I added way too much. You don't want to overstuff your egg rolls because it runs the risk of exploding or busting inside the fryer and that would just ruin your oil and it would it would just be a mess. Okay, so I only had a little bit of crab cake mixture left and I made this itty bitty egg roll. It's like a baby and it was adorable. <laughs> this is a little size comparison. That's a regular sized egg roll. All right, now that you're finished with your egg rolls, you can start frying them. When your oil is hot and ready, you can add your egg rolls. When your egg rolls are golden brown, you can take them out of the fryer. Make sure to lay your egg rolls on a couple of paper towels to drain off the oil after taking them out of the fryer. Now I'm going to teach you how to make my crab cake sauce. Simply TY actually made a different sauce, but I didn't have the ingredients to make his sauce, so I just made mine. Add a few tablespoons of mayonnaise into a small bowl. Then add 1 half teaspoon of mustard, 1 half tablespoon of hot sauce, and 1 fourth or 1 half teaspoon of lemon juice. Mix everything together until well combined. After you've mixed everything together, you're finished with your sauce. I don't usually add seasonings in my sauce, but if you want to add seasonings, I'd recommend either Old Bay, Pepper, accent, salt, or Cajun seasoning. And that's it, you are all finished with your egg rolls. So now I'm gonna go over a few things that I did differently from Simply Food by TY. Simply Food by TY actually added Old Bay hot sauce, but I couldn't get my hands on that at the time, so I couldn't use it. I just used regular um, red hot hot sauce. He also used garlic and butter Ritz crackers, but I didn't have that either, so I just used regular Ritz crackers. If I had those ingredients, I totally would have used them, especially the Old Bay hot sauce. That sounds interesting. And then I also added some onions and some peppers in my crab cake mixture because I love onions and peppers in everything. I just had to add it. And this was the finished product. These egg rolls tasted so, so good. Especially if you squeeze some lemon over it and dip it in some sauce. Mmm, so delicious. Me and my mom really enjoyed these egg rolls, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Everything I used in the video will be down in the description below. I will also be putting Simply Food by TY's recipe down in the description. Go check him out. He has some awesome recipes on his channel. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye! By the way, you could totally heat up your egg rolls in an air fryer. It's way better than putting it in the microwave because they come out all crispy and crunchy and hot. I will recommend cutting the egg rolls in half before putting them in the air fryer. So when you put them inside the air fryer, the egg rolls heat up inside and out. Mmm.
Oh, girl. I got that crunch on the end. Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make a crab cake sandwich with parmesan garlic fries and a dill weed sauce. So let's get started with the video. So we're going to begin by prepping our vegetables. First I cut up a red bell pepper and a green bell pepper. Then I chopped up an onion. And then I sliced some red onions. We're gonna use the red onions for our crab cake sandwich. Then I just chopped up some green onions and cut some slices of a tomato. When you're finished with that, you can begin making your sauce. Add 2 thirds cup of mayonnaise into a small bowl. Then add 1 to 2 teaspoons of hot sauce, 1 fourth teaspoon of Cajun seasoning, and 1 fourth teaspoon of dill weed. Add a bit of lemon juice, a half a teaspoon of mustard, 1 fourth teaspoon of Old Bay. Mix it all together until well combined, and you are finished. Set your sauce to the side. In a small pan over medium heat, melt some butter and saute 1 8 cup of your peppers and onions. Lightly season your vegetables with salt and pepper. Saute your vegetables until translucent. This usually takes about 4 to 5 minutes. When your vegetables are finished cooking, take them out the heat and set them to the side. In a medium sized bowl, add 1 4th teaspoon of Old Bay, 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of Creole seasoning, and 1 4th teaspoon of pepper. Then add 1 half tablespoon of parsley, 1 half teaspoon of Dijon mustard, 1 eighth teaspoon of hot sauce, 1 eighth teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, 1 half teaspoon of lemon juice, and 2 teaspoons of mayonnaise. Whisk everything together until well combined. After that, add 1 tablespoon of a beaten egg. When everything is mixed together, go ahead and add your crab meat. I added about 6 ounces of lump crab meat. Then add 2 tablespoons of crushed Ritz crackers, 1 8 cup of green onions, and 1 8 cup of your peppers and onions. Fold everything together until well combined. When you're finished, set your crab meat to the side. Okay, so now I'm going to place my crab meat in a circular cookie cutter. You don't have to use a circular cookie cutter, I just like to use it so I can get that perfect circle shape. Gently press your crab meat down inside the cookie cutter to form your perfect circle shape.
Use a spoon to gently press the crab cake down while pulling the cookie cutter off of it. Now lightly season your crab cakes with salt and pepper. When you're finished with that, cover your crab cakes and place them in the fridge for about 30 minutes. In a large pan, melt butter over medium heat. Then, cook three strips of bacon. When your bacon is finished cooking, take it off the heat. Once the 30 minutes are up, we're going to prepare our crab cakes. They should be firm enough to coat in breadcrumbs. Pour a good amount of breadcrumbs on a plate. Then, coat your crab cake. The breadcrumbs will create a crust that will hold the crab cake together. Shake off the excess breadcrumbs and then set your crab cake to the side. Go ahead and cook your crab cake over medium heat in a medium sized pan. Add a bit more butter to your pan and then flip your crab cake. Now baste your crab cake with the melted butter in the pan. Cook your crab cake until it's golden brown on both sides and then take it off the heat. In a small pan, melt some butter over medium heat. Then add about 6 pieces of shrimp. I've already cleaned and deveined these. Go ahead and add your favorite seasonings. I added pepper, creole seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, and some Old Bay. Cook your shrimp until they are pink on both sides and have curled a bit. This usually takes around 4-5 to five minutes. When your shrimp's finished cooking, take it off the heat and set it to the side. Add thin slices of butter to your buns and then place them on a large pan over medium heat to toast. Make sure to toast both sides of your buns. The buns I'm using are brioche buns. Alright, so now we can begin creating our sandwich. Add a spoonful of the sauce we made earlier. Then add about two pieces of lettuce. A slice of tomato. Some red onions. Your crab cake. Some pieces of bacon, some more sauce, three shrimp, another spoonful of sauce on the top bun. And that's basically it. You are all finished with your crab cake sandwich. Now let's move on to the fries. Cook some fries in an air fryer or an oven.
While the fries are cooking, melt three tablespoons of butter in a small saucepan over medium heat. When the butter is melted, add two teaspoons of garlic. Cook the butter and the garlic together for about a minute. Then take it off the heat. Place your fries in a large bowl. Then add your butter and garlic. I didn't use all the butter and garlic I made, by the way. Toss everything together for a bit. Then add some seasoned salt, some pepper, some Parmesan cheese, and a few shakes of parsley. And that's it! You are all finished with your garlic Parmesan fries. Go ahead and add your fries to your plate and you are all finished. And this is the finished product. Man, it looked really good and it smelled delicious. The fries were especially good. Like, I didn't think I'd like it because I'm not a huge fan of garlic like my mom, but man, the fries were delicious. The crab cake sandwich also came out very well. The crab cake, the bacon, and the sauce were my favorite parts of the sandwich. And the sauce went well with everything. Alright, that's it for this video. Everything I used in the video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And thank you, thank you so much for watching. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'll be teaching you how to make these delicious, crispy, golden brown crab cakes. In my last video, I made crab stuffed lobster. Well, I had some of the crab stuffing left, so I decided to use it to make crab cakes. The method I used to make these crab cakes is actually by Gordon Ramsay. I saw a video that he made on how he makes his crab cakes and I was like, oh snap, I have got to try that. So let's go ahead and get started with the video. First I'm going to show you how to make the crab mixture from the previous video. First we're going to chop up our vegetables into very small fine pieces. We're going to be chopping up an onion, a green pepper, a red pepper, and some green onions. Oh, and parsley. In a small skillet, melt some butter at medium heat. Then place 1 4th cup of your finely chopped peppers into the skillet, and 1 4th cup of your finely chopped onions as well. Saute your vegetables until they're translucent. Make sure to season your vegetables. I only season my vegetables with some salt and pepper. When you're finished, take your vegetables off of the heat to cool. In a medium sized bowl, pour in 1 4th cup of breadcrumbs and 1 tablespoon of breadcrumbs. Then add your sauteed vegetables. Now add 1 4th cup of green onions and one tablespoon of parsley. Mix everything together until well combined. Then add two tablespoons of egg whites. After that, add one tablespoon and two teaspoons of mayonnaise, two and one half teaspoons of fresh lemon juice, one half teaspoon of Wickshire sauce, and one and one half tablespoon of Dijon mustard. Mix everything together until well combined. Oh, and by the way, I didn't think about this until after I had made everything, but I should have added one half teaspoon of hot sauce. I am suggesting to you now, add one half teaspoon of hot sauce in your crab cakes. Now we're gonna add our seasonings. So you're going to add 1 4th teaspoon of onion powder, 1 4th teaspoon of garlic powder, 1 4th teaspoon of Old Bay, 1 4th teaspoon of Creole seasoning, and 1 4th teaspoon of pepper. Then add 1 16 ounce can of lump crab meat. Now we're going to fold the crab meat into the mixture. Make sure you fold everything until well combined.
Alright, so now you're finished with your crab cake mixture. Now it's time to create the actual crab cake. Fill a circular cookie cutter with the crab cake mixture we just made. We're using a cookie cutter so that our crab cakes have a perfect circular shape. Make sure you're gently pressing the mixture down so it creates the shape. I didn't fill it all the way in the cookie cutter just because I didn't want my crab cakes to be that tall, so I did leave a bit of room at the top just so I could get the height I wanted. When you finish filling the cookie cutter, gently press down and take the crab cake out of the cookie cutter. When you do, you should have a perfect circular crab cake. Use a spatula to set it to the side on a baking sheet. I love how circular and perfect these crab cakes look. I mean, they just look so nice. <laughs> All right, moving on. Place your crab cakes into the fridge so they can firm up and keep their shape. While your crab cakes are in the fridge, we're gonna do some prep work. We're gonna start by cracking and beating the eggs in the middle bowl. You don't have to do this first. I just always do it first for some reason, like always. I don't know why. Pour flour in the first bowl and panko breadcrumbs in the third bowl. He didn't do this in the video, but I seasoned my flour and my breadcrumbs. The seasonings I used were pepper, creole, garlic powder, onion powder, and Old Bay seasoning. But I only added pepper and creole in the panko. When you're finished, take your crab cakes out of the fridge. Lightly season your crab cake with some pepper and salt. We're going to begin coating them. Coat your crab cake in the flour. Shake off the excess flour and then place it in the eggs. I used a spatula to flip the crab cake over just because I didn't uh, want to pick it up and it fall apart. Using a spoon, I covered the crab cake completely in the eggs. Then I picked up the crab cake with a spatula and placed it in the panko breadcrumbs. Cover the crab cake in the panko breadcrumbs. Then shake off the excess breadcrumbs. Place the crab cake to the side on a baking sheet. Then just repeat this process until you run out of crab cakes. Now pat down the breadcrumbs and then shape it again. Do this with each crab cake. Place a little bit of oil in a pan at medium heat. Place your crab cakes into the pan. Cook the crab cakes until golden brown on both sides. I like my crab cakes a bit more well done, so you're really going to see the golden brown color. <laughs> Once you've colored both sides of the crab cakes, you're going to add 3 tablespoons of butter into the pan. As the butter starts to froth, it colors the sides of the crab cake. Roll the pan around, then use the melted butter to baste your crab cakes. Now take your crab cakes out of the pan. I place the crab cakes on a plate with a couple of paper towels on them just so the excess oil and butter could drain. Then I place them on a silicone baking sheet. 
Gordon Ramsay actually put his crab cakes in a pan, but I had too many to do that and I wanted my crab cakes now, so I placed it on a baking sheet. But anyway, place your crab cakes into the oven at 425 degrees for about 5 minutes. This is going to make the crab cake nice and crispy on the outside and nice and warm on the inside. And that's it! You are totally finished with your crab cakes. The crab cakes look so pretty. They're golden brown. They look excellent. I really like the method Gordon Ramsay uses to cook his crab cakes, and I will definitely be doing this again. Ooh, ooh, and when you squeeze some lemon on the top and then dip it in some crab cake sauce, oh my god, it is excellent. I have, I'm gonna make these again one day, I swear. Mm -hmm. Alright, that's it for this video. Don't forget to turn on your notification bell for more videos like this. Like, comment, and subscribe, and thank you so much for watching. Bye! Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to make these delicious crab cake sliders. So let's get started with the video. We're going to begin by making the sauce. In a small bowl, add 2 thirds cup of mayo, a half a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of lemon juice, one teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce, one teaspoon of hot sauce, one fourth teaspoon of paprika, one eighth teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and one fourth teaspoon of Old Bay. Then, once you've added all of your ingredients, mix everything together until well combined. When you have finished making your sauce, set it to the side. Next, in a small pan over medium heat, add olive oil. Then add a quarter cup of diced onions and a quarter cup of diced bell peppers. Lightly season the onions and bell peppers with salt and pepper and then saute them for about 4-5 to five minutes. When you finish sauteing your veggies, set them to the side. Next, in a large bowl, add a quarter cup of mayonnaise, one teaspoon of lemon juice, two teaspoons of Worcestershire sauce, one and a half teaspoons of Old Bay hot sauce, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard, a half a teaspoon of pepper, a half a teaspoon of Old Bay, one fourth teaspoon of Creole seasoning, one fourth teaspoon of onion powder, one fourth teaspoon of garlic powder, one tablespoon of parsley, and one beaten egg. Once you've added all your ingredients, mix everything together. Once everything has been mixed together, add one pound of lump crab meat, a half a cup of breadcrumbs, the diced onions and bell peppers from before, and a quarter cup of green onions. Now fold everything together until well combined. When you're finished, you can begin preparing the crab cakes. Next, add a good amount of your crab cake mixture, about one or two spoonfuls, into a small circular cookie cutter. While adding the crab cake mixture, gently press it down and shape it. Then, remove the circular cookie cutter. Repeat this process until you run out of the crab mixture. When you have finished shaping all of your crab cakes, cover them and place them in the fridge for about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, your crab cakes should be firm enough to keep their shape, which means we can now coat the crab cakes in breadcrumbs. On a plate, add a good amount of breadcrumbs. Then coat your crab cakes in the breadcrumbs. The breadcrumbs will create a crust that will help keep the crab cake together when you're cooking it in the pan.
Repeat this process until you've coated all of your crab cakes. After coating all of your crab cakes, set them to the side. In a large pan over medium heat, add a generous amount of olive oil. Once the pan is hot, place three or four crab cakes into the pan. Then cook your crab cakes for about four to five minutes on each side. Once your crab cakes have almost finished cooking, add about 3 to 4 tablespoons of butter and baste your crab cakes in the butter. When your crab cakes have finished cooking, take them out of the pan. Repeat this process until you've cooked all of your crab cakes. Next, in a large pan over medium heat, add butter. Once the butter is melted, add brioche slider buns into the pan. Toast your buns until they are golden brown. When you finish toasting the slider buns, take them out of the pan. Now that everything has been cooked and prepared, you can now assemble your crab cake sliders. First, place your buns on a plate. Then, on the bottom bun, add the sauce, lettuce, tomato, onion, sliced avocados, and the crab cake. Then add a bit of sauce on the top bun and place it on top. Place a toothpick into your slider and after that you are all done. Then repeat this process to assemble the rest of your crab cake sliders. And this is the finished result! These crab cake sliders were so freaking delicious! I am super happy with how they came out. The sauce, the crab cakes, the avocado, everything about it was just so good. Plus, I'm really happy with how they look. They look like tiny crabby patties! These sliders would make a really good appetizer, or you could just eat them for dinner. Alright, that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Everything I used in this video will be down in the description below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Bye!